Hey, welcome back again to Cold Case Review. I'm your host, Kevin Mackey. We're coming to you today from Station 72, Kasumnas Fire Department in Elk Grove. We want to thank our host for welcoming us into their home. Today's case actually has nothing to do with this fire department. That's not why we're here. We just like to shoot things nap bays and hang out, hang out around some pretty cool apparatus. Yep, that's right. So we have again with us today the EMS Fellow for uh, UC Davis, Dr. Matt Maynard. Thanks for joining us yeah. today, Matt. No problem. Happy to be here. All right. Take it away. Tell us about the, today's case. All right. So it's nice to be here. Uh, the case that we're going to be discussing today um, in, involved a 56-year-old gentleman who was in, uh, riding a bicycle and was struck by a vehicle traveling at approximately 15 miles an hour. Um, when EMS arrived, the patient's main complaint was his right shoulder and his right hip. Uh, and so they were able to get him packaged up and get him in the back of the ambulance and uh, assess, you know, get a, a, a thorough trauma assessment on him. Uh, you know, looked him up head to toe. He had some, uh, a lot of shoulder pain, no, no obvious deformities. Um, had some just scattered abrasions, uh, but no like obvious, you know, significant traumatic injury. Uh, got him on the monitor. The only real abnormality was, you know, he had some um, high blood pressure. He had systolic blood pressures in about the, the 190s um, and was a little bit tachycardic at like 105. But um, otherwise, you know, his SATs were, were doing fine and he was GCS at 15. So given the amount of, of pain that the patient was in, uh, the medics decided to go ahead and get a line on him and, and in the setting of trauma, they got, got a IV access and then decided to uh, choose ketamine for, for pain management, which was part of their, their protocol. So uh, the medic drew up, drew up the ketamine and their dose is 0 0.3 milligrams per kilogram and then uh, uh, gave the patient the, the medication. And right after this, uh, medic gave the, the rundown to the hospital, gave a report, and then turned around to find the patient was uh, blue and, and unresponsive. And uh, so you know, immediately she got into action, uh, you, know, set, you know, managed the airway, uh, helped, you know, jaw thrust, got on a non there. Doesn't appear that the oxygen saturation ever dipped. Um, and at that time they had arrived at the hospital. Um, so they ended up getting into the hospital, got coded as a full trauma activation. The patient, because of the you know, low GCS, was, was intubated and had an extensive trauma workup. So they had you know, CT head, CTC spine, chest, uh, T and L spine, and abdomen, and plain film imaging of just about everything. Uh, and no traumatic injuries were found, you know, just some scattered abrasions. Uh, ended up getting extubated and, and leaving the hospital not long after that. And so uh, there's lots of concern in, in this case about the ketamine administration, which caused us to, to go back and look at what might have contributed to this, this uh, patient condition. So quick rundown, uh, guy sounds like he's got some minor trauma relatively, some shoulder pain, vitals are pretty good. Uh, ketamine's the right drug in this situation, we've talked a lot about that. The mm -hmm. ketamine is a really good uh, pain control medication in low doses, especially for orthopedic type trauma. Yeah. So shoulder injury, this would be the perfect person. Uh, and so, and we have, so we've selected the right patient, the right drug, we know what we're doing, uh, and then things go really, really south. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so. What did you guys learn uh, after, like, doing a after action review? Did you discover any things that kind of maybe led to this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I took a deep dive into to the protocols uh, regarding administration of ketamine here, and uh, the medics, you know, they they followed the protocol. They gave the medication according to, to the way they were instructed, but it just says to, to give it to be given via slow IV push. And so the ketamine that we get in, uh, for the ambulance and that we have on our rigs usually comes in concentrations of uh, uh, five or 50 milligrams per milliliter. So the average person's getting around 25 milligrams, maybe a little bit more, uh, which is about half a milliliter. So the volumes are really, really small. Um, and so what happened in this case is medic got the IV, uh, attached a J-loop, pulled up the medication and then started giving that, uh, you know, via slow IV push, just directly from the syringe to the J-loop. And uh, so it got me thinking, you know, how much 
volume is there in uh, that little J loop? And turns out it's about half a milliliter. And so what you know we think happened in this case is that the that little J loop portion had been loaded with the ketamine and then when they went to flush it, it just flushed all that ketamine all at one time. So the patient was essentially given a bolus of ketamine. And so if you 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 know you look into the literature about this, you know, the faster administration rates of ketamine uh, lead to uh, more adverse uh, events that patients have like feelings of unreality um, is probably like the, the most common one. That probably when I think about ketamine, the most feared complication that, that I think about is laryngeospasm, which occurs in about 0.3% of administrations of ketamine, but that's a really scary uh, thing and, and could have happened in this case. Um, but apnea all, also can happen with ketamine administration as well. And if you look in the literature about that, it's about 0.8% of the cases um, can, the patients can be apneic. And so I think in this case, the, the medication was just given fast and that patient had an, an adverse event because of it and so the big the big learning point that I wanted to make uh, with this is that you know we want to slow the administration rates of ketamine or give it over a, a longer time period that's important but then also to be aware that you know laryngeospasm can happen and apnea can happen uh, and that it's more commonly associated with faster rates so but just not to forget that that, that you still need to really closely monitor that airway so because ketamine is used in operating rooms mm -hmm. to put people to sleep for operations uh, it's been around for a long time yeah. uh, and the pain control side really kind of came out of the military literature Correct. where they were giving it on the uh, front lines to control pain so it's a really effective drug it's a really good tool but just like any tool it has to be used for the right job in the right way yep and so used inappropriately the tools not going to give you what you want and could potentially create problems as we saw in this case yep okay so uh, going back again now that you've identified the problem going forward if you were involved in that system or had some sort of operational involvement in that system how would you fix that going forward yeah um, you know I would give the medics a specific time uh, period that the medication should be ad administered over, which would be, you know, if you, you look at the rates, it's uh, anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes was a pretty good side effect profile. So around 10 minutes, I'd probably put that in my protocol, you know, give it over 10 minutes and then also add a dilutionary factor to it. Um, and probably one of the easiest things to do would just be to put the medication in 100 mil milliliter bag and drip it in over 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So really I think the take home message is dilutional control. Uh, dilutional control, diluting out the ketamine, giving it, not giving it in such a big push or a big bolus uh, is perfect. Um, good information. So so at the end of the day this guy ended up uh, doing well? Yeah, he ended up walking out of the hospital doing, doing just fine. Uh, just had a little throat maybe a there. little sore <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe a little sore throat for a few days but he ended up doing okay outstanding well we hope you enjoy these cold case reviews um, thanks again dr. Maynard for no joining problem. us and we'll see you next time on cold case review okay. see ya